One of my projects for this channel is to have a series of chats with you guys about the human aspects of doing physics. We're not robots, after all. For this first one, let's talk about imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome is the persistent inability to believe that one's success is deserved or has been legitimately achieved as a result of one's own efforts or skills. Yes, I did just use the first definition supplied by Google, but it's from the Oxford English Dictionary, so it's legit. Anecdotally speaking, imposter syndrome runs rather rampant in the physics and broader scientific community, especially among groups traditionally excluded from the field. Now, I'm not saying that everyone deals with imposter syndrome. They don't. But I've dealt with it, and I have other physics and science friends who dealt with it, and it's one of those things that can be very isolating if you don't talk about it with anyone. So let's talk. I've found that imposter syndrome manifests itself in various ways, depending on my personal context. In college, I felt very insecure about being a physics major. I worried that I wasn't smart enough to understand physics, and this feeling persisted even when I would sit down and look at my list of good grades and growing CV. Why did I feel this way? That's a question for the psychologists, but the point is that I did, and it was hard. For example, I was fortunate enough to do research with an astrophysics professor the summer after my freshman year, but I hated talking about it, because talking about it would clearly reveal how little I actually knew about what I was doing, right? I managed it okay in conversations with my research advisor, but when it came to talking about what I was doing outside of the small research group I was in, like with my family, I just didn't want to touch it. And my family was so eager to hear about what I was doing, too. In grad school, imposter syndrome for me was more about the everyday choices I made about how to allocate my time. The problem with grad school is that you don't figure out how to be a good grad student until after you finish your PhD. So this insecurity filled up a lot of my time. I was also still dealing with, am I smart enough to be doing this? And do I understand this well enough? Feelings. Side note, the hard thing about grad school isn't the difficulty of the material. I mean, it is difficult, but what gets you is the mental side of getting through it. Right now, I'm in a good place though. Minimal imposter -y feelings. So, how did I overcome my own version of imposter syndrome? Well, for one, it took time. For two, it took very intentionally patting myself on the back whenever I added something to my CV, say, or got a good grade. Taking the time to say to myself, well done, you did this. For three, I talked about it with my therapist and therapy groups. In particular, in grad school, I was part of a graduate women's therapy group, and I found it so liberating to hear of similar struggles from other graduate women. Talking about it with my friends was also important so that there was minimal posturing between us about how well things were going. To close off this chat, I'll ask you, do you deal with imposter syndrome? If so, how are you dealing with it? And if not, how do you see your new understanding affecting your view of your classmates and colleagues? Let's talk about it in the comments. Till next time.